this is something obviously that's been covered a lot recently and i kind of missed out on it because obviously i haven't been recording so often but this is news courtesy of dazed right that recently berlin has implemented a ban on dancing which has also led to essentially loads of clubs closing which i'm going to mention later on but um yeah man that berlin winter or that berlin new year that i was planning is completely been thrown in the bin based on this headline from days berlin has banned dancing in clubs standing doing burger and anyone so as i mentioned previously i think in other podcasts i was meant to go to berlin um this weekend actually to go to Berghain. i think solomon and somebody else was playing on a friday and then i forgot who else was going to be playing on a saturday don't quiz me what was my lineup i was gonna go oh let me quit on with this shoe but december bomb bomb they've all been cancelled obviously if i go in the temp yeah so on the 10th it was going to be so um solomon on finest fridays alongside Giajana t and panorama bar which i thought would be an amazing time to go see that for a little bit and then of course the main event on the 17th so on the 10th was going to be 17 years of Berghain, right birthday weekend coming up it was meant to be playing in the main room at Berghain, colin benders live ben clock um edith sorry edith main how do you pronounce that is it f domain um helena half imagine seeing her in Berghain. i have the activist jazz again who i saw here in london he won she was really great natty series who i saw last time i went to Berghain a few weeks ago um rolando terence fixima again absolute legend and then at panorama bar there's going to be um Agenia, who i've seen on whore and another platform dj live streaming really cool um alinka Alinka, Linka, sorry playing chris williams ryan elliott soft crash and steffi back to back with virginia you know classic um panorama bar vibes and then in sal bar is going to be tobias playing live so that was going to be the time that was going to go right it's going to be flipping amazing i was really looking forward to it and then i also had a plan um i also had a trip planned on new year's day for the club sylvester which is usually their new year's day celebration that usually runs three days kind of like crazy weekend up to i think a wednesday or whatnot and i had my whole thing planned out booked holiday but luckily I didn't book the flights or the accommodation ahead of time. And I think that's one of the benefits of COVID traveling because everywhere, because the world isn't as open as it obviously was post pre pandemic. Most flights I've basically seen even last minute aren't that crazy, especially flights to Europe. Yes. You might have to pay a hundred pound, 200 pound more if you book the week of, or the week or the week prior, right. Or two weeks prior to it, but it's still within some sort of reason. So what I've been doing because of obviously the changes um, to the rules and restrictions have changed all the time. And obviously because we're not in the EU anymore, the UK, there's an extra, extra layered, um, there's an extra layer of kind of trickiness to kind of get around. I've kind of been protecting myself and be like, you know what? These budget airlines anyway, don't like giving refunds. They refuse to even put protection on it. So I'd much rather just protect myself, be like, try and book as last minute as I can and then go that way. And obviously I have some savings so I can use that for accommodation, spending money, but just do it that way. And luckily that plan did work because at the time that I was just about considering to book my Airbnb, get my flight sorted out, boom, suddenly I'm hearing rumors or rumblings that the clubs are going to close. I think that's what I heard prior to like the last weekend, which was um, at Bergheim, which was, which was yeah, the one that just happened. So that was um, on Saturday, the, the 4th of December, right? Oh yeah, no, Friday the 3rd of December until the 4th or in the 4th and the 5th or whatever, right? That weekend with D-Dan, Rubenstein, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people were saying, yeah, this might be the last weekend of raving. And I was like, oh shit. So I just kind of kept my eye to the ground. I kept my ear to the ground, sorry. And then of course, news came out that they were going to ban dancing. And then that eventually led to clubs saying, yeah, there's no point of us staying open. They've already got one restriction in terms of 50% capacity. Then they've got a ban on dancing. It just doesn't make it viable for a place like Berghain or for most clubs, I'd assume, in that regard. But I guess in some ways the Berlin um, kind of government thought it was a great way to kind of make sure clubs still get money in through the tills by keeping them open, but then just buying the dancing, which is weird. But I guess it kind of goes back to what they did prior when they had all the spaces open in terms of open air, but you weren't allowed to dance. That was a kind of weird thing. They said the following, as of Wednesday, December the 6th, Berliners will no longer be allowed to dance inside the nightclubs. In a bid to minimize the transmission of COVID, Amid the spread of the Omicron variant, the Senate of Berlin is enforcing a ban on dancing inside nightclubs and imposing a strict maximum limits on large events. TBH, it's hard to picture clubbers swaying gently to Marcel Beatman um, banging out techno. 
of course meant to be a joke but it's not funny as well as making cutting shapes um verb sorry verboten clubbers have also been advised to limit contact with other people the 2g rule also applies everywhere in nightlife in berlin referring to germans large-scale events nightlife guidelines which require patrons to hold on to 2g's um either gimp fed or whatever vaccinated or gensin having had a positive test in the last six months and one thing i can say about berlin even though they have a very low um vaccine adoption adherence whatever rate i think it's in the 60s or something like that. that's really low one thing i have to do i have to say i saw more people wearing face masks and generally being cognitive or aware of their surroundings and trying to not hang around places too long than i did i've ever seen them in my entire life in london even during the peak of the pandemic um because i felt like whenever people go outside in london they just did what they wanted to do when they're at home i guess you couldn't you know when you couldn't go outside you couldn't do it but for the most part i didn't really see any people's change in real behaviors the people that went to wear masks were wore them but i didn't see nothing being enforced i didn't see people getting turned away in shops i didn't see any social shaming until not being wearing a mask it's, there was none of that but in berlin you definitely feel it when you go on public transport and you haven't got your mask on you forget it you feel people kind of looking at you you feel a little bit you know again a bit of social shame a bit of social pressure um people are generally just kind of you know aware of their surroundings more it's just more of a you kind of feel like you're living in a pandemic more so over there than you do here. Here, you just feel like people just conveniently try to kind of put it to the back of their mind because they don't want to remember, they don't want to listen, they don't want to care, they want to live their lives. But over there, for sure, people are a little bit more aware of it. But again, hasn't helped things either. I'm sure vaccinations are not helping, but all that adherence, um, all that compliance hasn't done nothing. They're still in a worse position than we are. They're having to close or having to ban dancing. And, you know, again, one of the most um, important in cities in europe they're not allowed to dance and um, all these things they're being punished with despite them really taking covid seriously which is again um something that we need to kind of highlight it says here the news comes after germany's federal government said that an all night clubs in states in high infection rates must close as the ban is legally sorry it's only legally enforceable from next week clubs will be allowed to open at the weekend at 50 percent capacity which again i've said before was a previous night that happened um on the third and off there in Panama by Bergen. It says here, yeah, um, 20 months of pandemic and no better idea than to ban dancing, said Club Commissioners Berlin um, Lutz Lane uh, Lich, Lich Singer. Lis, how do you say that? Lysenring. 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 And um, we continue to hear so it doesn't take much um, imagination to figure out that you can't enforce a dance ban in the party basements and private homes without 2G and without test. No word about PCR tests, no data on level of infections assigned to clubs that justifies some massive restrictions, which is true. It's always been the case, though, isn't it? Whatever city, most metropolitan cities, London included too, whenever it comes to dealing with COVID, for whatever reason, the nightlife and hospitality industry just gets hit over the head. For some reason, people just, and all my assume those places are the ones that have the highest amount of infection rates when there's been no evidence to support that. If anything, there's evidence that is, is in the contrary because most of these places, in order to kind of run a business and to make sure people want to return, you don't want to comply, you don't want to install ventilation systems, whatever needs to be done to make sure that you're able to kind of keep your kitchen and your tills and your bars open, that doesn't necessarily make sense. And just in general, it's just a tired approach that clearly isn't working. Can we try something else? No, we don't. The clubs are the first to close and the last to open all the time. Same, same thing. <clears throat> there we got a post here from some guy on twitter says clubs are open but dancing is forbidden i guess because the vibes are what was most infectious again another attempt at a joke another person here says berlin announced that clubs can stay open but dancing is cancelled dark wave stays winning baby cool and then of course the news that crushed my heart completely was the announcement that Berkheim says on the occasion of the current pandemic situations and the best health interests of everyone events in Berkheim and Bar are being discontinued until further notice of course mostly to do with the ban on, on dancing I don't think the 50% rule really applied I think they were doing some very clever sort of you know finessing in terms of saying hey with 50% capacity in Berkheim 50% capacity in Panama Bar so that equals 100, right? That kind of thing. Or maybe, you know, divvying up around between Seoul, the other place, whatever. I don't know. I'm sure they did some, some finagling because from the reports I heard, no one really said it was. It felt half empty. If anything, people were saying it was still mad full that previous weekend. Obviously, it kind of, I, I guess, slowed down after a while because I'm sure there are a lot of clubbers out there who also feel a little bit panicked whenever the government says, hey, we're going to close this, we're going to ban this. It makes people think, hey, I probably shouldn't be outside and whatnot. But it didn't really change what they were doing, really, in the grand scheme of things, if you think about it was kind of the same as usual business as usual but again no surprise really that we're in the position that we're in now um same old same old um i'm just praying for different outcomes or no i'm just praying for different 
resolutions for this issue that we're currently facing. Clearly, there's an issue with COVID. Clearly, um, whether the whether the um, whether the kind of um, results of it are you no, know, clearly there's an issue with COVID, right? Clearly, people are getting sick, people are dying, but maybe the severity of it is greatly exaggerated. And then maybe our approach to it is just a little bit antiquated, right? Maybe we need to think of something interesting, something new, something innovative, something out of the box to kind of deal with this issue. Or we need to come to a resolution or we need to come to a realization that we're going to have to live with this. And if we're going to live with this, let's just live with it. Let's not just keep going back and forth with this lot. That just doesn't work. It really doesn't. If anything, what it does, it just kind of pits people against each other. Vax, anti-vax, lockdown, pro-lockdown, anti-lockdown. Um, it doesn't convince anybody to join your side. I've rarely, if ever, seen anyone who was pro lockdown go to be anti lockdown and vice versa. Um, it does nothing for public confidence. It does nothing for the economy. It does nothing for people's just protect, nothing for their mental health, um, nothing to help families. I'm sure, like, you know, small kids and stuff in a tiny apartment having to do homeschool, all these nightmare situations. Like, what are people doing? Let alone the people who move to those cities with the dreams of pursuing a career in whatever arts whatnot then the complete industry is completely shut down you're unable to do those kind of things and then you're told to what learn another skill no i want to do this thing i want to promote i want to be a musician whatever now now suddenly i've got to change tact and discover flipping wood making and trying to become a carpenter like what the hell is this like it makes no sense and it doesn't seem to be any other way out of this apart from what they want you to do and again still the things they want you to do clearly aren't working because if they i feel as if they think to themselves if everyone gets vaccinated, this virus goes away. It isn't, though. That's why we have other things in place, like the social distancing, like the mask mandates, like, you know, cleaning of certain, you know, public areas, whatever it may be. All these things are in place because we still know if you're vaccinated, you still get the virus. And if you're vac and also we still know that it doesn't matter if everyone gets vaccinated, the virus still spreads because it mutates. Clearly, that's why we've got all these different flipping mutations and variants all over the place. If that's the case, let's think of something else. Or let's just accept our position that we're in and just learn to live with it but i don't know like it seems as if they, they think they can save everyone when they obviously can't because some people have got you know uh, pre-existing health conditions that are always going to make them susceptible to viruses in that regard it's just a really weird situation to be in it really is two years on nearly three and we're still doing the same shit it's like i don't know man. i don't get it i really don't it's just maddening man Madden. And again, the whole clubbing thing, I understand in some respect, cool, do what you have to do. If you got, you know, if you have to just, in, if you just have to mandate vaccine passports, I don't, that's a necessary evil. It is what it is. I'm just pissed off when they have to be closed. Again, my heart and, you know, feelings go out to everybody out there in Berlin who's just started to get, you know, get a career started again, just started to re restart their career again in nightlife. Um, you know, get taking some bookings, be able to work in some bars, do the door picking at some venues, and then suddenly, boom, they pull the rug on your from your feet just before Christmas. It must be super miserable for sure in a city like that, where essentially the entire point of being there is to go out to the clubs and shit. So when that gets taken away, a huge part of the city's identity and soul um, is completely eradicated and stripped away. So for sure, it's a stressful situation to be in. But again, necessary evil, vaccine passports, but then the limiting of capacity, like just close us. If you're going to take away our capacity, just close us. There's no point of having clubs open half halfway through and it's all, halfway full. And there's no point of also having clubs open with flipping, um, what you call it? No dancing rules included. It just doesn't make any sense. It's just like, what are we doing here? But again, what are we doing here? As Brendan Shaw would say. But yeah, it is what it is in a situation we're in. Um, hopefully it gets reconciled very soon. If it doesn't, just going to go around in circles as per usual and no one's going to be none the wiser because we are who we say we are.